Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you step by step using the grasshopper in the rhino to creating this structure, all the pattern for your ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this tutorial, we're going to including a little bit grasshopper just for you to get to understand the program. But we are going to create this in the regular Rhino and just using the grasshopper to working in the middle bar. So that's starting from the scratch. I'm kind of coming into the front view and set up my ring size. We are going to draw a circle for diameter 16. With this, I'm going to coming into the right view and creating the profile. Basically, in the inside, I'm going to creating a straight line by using the line command and snapping into the middle. And this is like the line from the middle, so it's equal distance on both sides. Once I have this line, I want to creating the arc. So let's go ahead to use the arc tool. And we are going to snapping into the endpoint, endpoint here and coming up for whatever that is. If you don't like a shape, you can actually create any type of the shape that you like. So I'm going to stay with this one and I'm simply it's going to creating the surface. Let's go ahead to starting with this surface by using the sweep one rail. And this is the rail, this is the cross section. So then we will get this surface. And again, if this surface is getting too bumpy, we can record a history and we can turn on the control point and then we can, you know, make it even more dramatic or what. All right. Oh, I forgot something. I would like to make it taper on the bottom. So actually I'm going to have that one to mirror to the other side. This is the simplest way to make a taper ring and we can do the 3D scale and we're going to snap in here and get it tapered like this. All right. So you will get the taper ring there. All right. Let's do it again. We are going to use the sweep one rail. Let's go to the surface. You got sweep one rail. You got rail cross section here, cross section there. And sometimes when you see sweep one rail has this issue, usually it's the direction of the cross section has the issue. But one thing you can also try is a line cross section. So it will give you like two line right there and we want to move in one to the other side. So it's not crossing there. Okay. Once you like it, click OK. Uh, before you click it, you also want to close the sweep. So that will be the whole things there. All right, with this one, let's create UV curve and we will creating a UV curve right here. This is the area you're going to do your own design. Now I'm coming into the top view. We need to create some sort of uh, a line there. So I'm going to explode it, this one. And with this one and this one, I'm going to divide them. Uh, let's try this one first. That's using the divided command and we want to divide into 12 section then we'll get some point there this is the section for us to draw our design that we like so i basically wanted to draw a, a straight line right there this regarding which of one it doesn't matter uh, because we are just gonna make one and repeat it i'm going to move this one to this I actually don't need that extra line there. All right, so let's go ahead to use the arc. I'm going to be about like this tall. So I'm just going to draw an arc holding my shift key and having that one to mirror to the other side like this. And we want to join those so that we can have a half round there. With this half round, I simply just go into mirror to the other side. And having this one using the move tool from here to here. All right, so now you see this is a connection that we need to connect it together. So let's go ahead to use the blend tool and we want to blend in between here and there. So that will be really pretty over there. Okay, so now we have this. I'm going to have this one to mirror to the other side. So we can have a complete shape, all right. So let's go ahead to explode it, this one. We just need to delete this one. This is the only section that we need right there. So let's go ahead to join them like this and go ahead to join them. 
All right, I'm going to moving that one from this endpoint to this endpoint right there. We don't need this bar here and here, and we just need to creating our pattern. Let's go ahead to use the linear array, and I'm going to array eight of them, and let's go ahead to do from here to there. And of course, I got too many. It's better to have many that you can delete and or trying to array it again. All right, so now we got those shape that we like. Let's go ahead to join them. All right, a lot of people will like to do the design right there, but I personally like to have the curve in this case um, apply to this surface first. So let's go ahead to use the command to creating this surface. Let's go ahead to join it. And we want to creating a flat surface first. So that's using a surface from planar curves. So then we'll get that flat surface. I'm going to change the color on this one. So it's easier to, to see the uh, line is going on the surface. So that's coming into the perspective. In the perspective, I'm going to use the command. It's under the transform. You have the float along surface. We are going to pick up the curve here and we're gonna click one of the corner and then we're gonna come in over here and we're gonna click on the other corner right there. Okay, as you can see, we flow in the curve on the surface. Now what you can do is you can creating your own cross section. In this case, I'm gonna come in into my side view and simply just go into creating a rectangle with a conic corner and so I'm going to right click here and decide how big I like to have on this one and moving this into the section that I have over there all right take a look on the perspective you definitely want them to get it close to the end as possible and let's give it a try we want to give it a try by using the sweep one rail this is the rail this is the cross section and then you will get something like this all right so now you can have this hopping on the surface really nice and if you uh, like the shape and you can go ahead to hiding this one that we created all right the same thing is going to happen over here i'm going to use exactly the same uh, pattern that we create so let's go ahead to creating the sweep one rail this is a rail this is a cross section so then we get this surface right here i'm not going to recreating the pattern that we have, we're just going to use this pattern. So coming into the transform, we have flow along the surface. This is the object. This is one of the corner. This is the other corner. Then that's how we get the shape. I'm going to use the same cross section and try how that look. So I'm going to use the same cross section, but I'm going to move it down a little bit so it's not overlapping that much. It's better not to be uh, lower than the ring size, but it, since it's a demonstration, I should have thinking about this earlier, but I'm going to continue to save the video time. Let's go ahead to use a sweep one rail. This is a rail, this is the cross section, and we'll get something like this. We can record a history if we want to, and we can continue to change it. All right, so let's look okay to me at this point, and I'm going to continue to do the rest of it. If you kind of temporarily just hiding this one right here, you're going to see that basically we got two curves. One of the curve is outside, and I'm going to put it into the green color right there. The other curve is inside right there, all right? So if I'm going to uh, creating the section, for example, I could have this one and using the divide, and I can divide into the section that I want. So for example, uh, I'm going to using maybe 40 point, right? And then in this case, once we got that 40 point, all those points is equally divided this curve into 40 point, right? We can have this one using the divide two and divide 40 point as well, right? So once we have this 40 point and we can do is connect it one by one. And with this one, we can pipe it this one. So that's the basic concept of, you know, having those points is for us to align 
So that will be one pipe. And think about it, I need to do that for all 40 of them. So to save my time, I think Grasshopper is great uh, coming at this point. I'm going to hide everything that is not related to the coming up uh, demo so I'm just going to hide a bunch of them all right so now we have those two curve right there and my goal is to have them able to do the point divided by itself for whatever how many point and I can easily to control to see the life change so let's go ahead to open the grasshopper now if you are with the Rhino 7 you can go ahead to open the grasshopper right away and if you are with the older version, you could actually download the Grasshopper plugin for free as well. All right, so it doesn't matter what version that you are using for the Rhino, you can use for the Grasshopper. So ideally, I need to tell the Grasshopper what this line for. So that's coming into the right size for the Grasshopper. Now this is the Grasshopper window, and it's really similar with the Rhino has all the icon right there. So for the curve, I would like to divide it like what I was planning to do to divide it for 40 of them. So I'm going to call out one of this curve by dragging it down. And you can see there's a some uh, letters there and what they are. Like if you're moving your mouse too close to this one, you're going to see curve. Right, so I need to tell the grasshopper which curve that is. So basically, I just need to click on this curve and I'm going to right click here and say set one curve. So now this curve, it is setting into uh, this box right there. The second things we need to take a look is the count. Like how many points do you want it? I will set it up for 40 points. So we need to input the number here. So coming into the top, you have input. There's a lot of things that you can choose for the input. We just want the first one for number slider. So I'm going to drag it here and you can basically see 0 0.025 as a default. So double click on the slider and we can set it up the maximum and minimum, right? So I do not need to have, you know, this like a big I think a zero after a point. So I'm going to move it to the zero. Minimum, of course, I need to have one. So let's go ahead to hit one here. The maximum number is up to you how many you want it. I'm just gonna set up for 80. I don't know how many I, that I need it but it's a range in between 1 to 80, I got 79 right there. Okay, so let's click OK there. All right, so if I drag it, this one, say this is the number slider I wanted to have for this number right here, you can quickly to see there's a cross line right there. That is showing how many number. If I have this one moving up, you can see like, how many number that is. If I want to set it up for like uh, 60, and you can see like 60 cross right there. All right, so that's very convenient. However, if I have a 60 outside, I need to have a 60 inside as well. I want them to be the same number. So in this case, I need to coming into the curve. And then I also wanted to drag another box right here. And this curve, uh, we want to set it up for this red one right here. So we right click and we want to set one curve there. And we want the same number. So I'm going to drag in this coming out to this number right there. So now you can see whatever that I'm moving, both of them has moving the same number, the same outside for 30 something, the same inside on the red one for the four, uh, 30 something. They will be the same number. Okay, cool. Now, if I have the point outside, inside the same, what I'd like to do is I want a line connected them, right? So I wanted the line to connect at both point. So that's coming into the curve. Under the curve, you have the primitive and you can use all kind of curve right here. You have a lot of a choice for this demonstration. Let's just use a simple line. So I'm going to uh, creating a line here and this on the top is showing where is your point. And then so currently we have 11 point. If we want to do more, we can do so. And so let's go ahead to drag the point to the A 
and drag the point from the bottom to the B. So I'm going to tell the rhino uh, grasshopper say, hey, you want a point from the green one going to the point from the red one, uh, the red curve, and that's how we get this. And if we will need more point, we can just drag in this bar and creating more point. All right, so now that's we creating the bar, uh, for whatever number that we want, then we want to have this curve to create some sort of the pipe. Coming into the surface, then you have a lot of a choice here. If you click on this arrow, then you're gonna, gonna see a lot of other choice. There's a one's called pipe, right? So we need to have a pipe there. Now the first one is the curve, which is the line that we're creating right there. So now everybody is having, you know, the pipe. The second one is actually for radius. So we need to creating a number right there. So coming in back to the first tab, we can creating a number. And again, you can have the number with the slider. So basically we're gonna drag another slider right here and we wanna change in this number. Now with this number, I don't need to go like super crazy. So it's like a uh, one digit after the point, that will be fine. The maximum, I'm going to set it for one. The minimum, I'm going to set it for point 0.1. So then you can slice in between the point 0.1 to one there. And we wanted this number, put it into the number right there. Okay, so if I slide this one, I can get it big or small. All right, so now we have two uh, things that we can move around. We can move around this one. We can move around this one. Let me go ahead to turn on what we had there. I'm going to hiding this part. And I also wanted to change this into other color. So it's not too confused. All right, so this like little demo here is showing that we can creating the bar inside for whatever number that we think is appropriate. It, instead of uh, doing one by one after divided, I think this is some sort of a, a good start for you to understand grasshopper a little bit. It's really powerful to make in a pattern and hopefully this can help you on your work. If you like everything that you're seeing here, all you need to do is bake it and then you're gonna click OK. You are creating another layer. We can close the grasshopper right now and this will be the uh, surface for you to use. And of course, you need to test it a little bit and see which one is gonna look better and they make it some result like this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you wanted to see more experiment things, a little bit introduction for other plucking. If you like, leave a comment, let me know. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.